Before Plato and Aristotle, before Confucius and the Buddha, there was a group of great sages who made discoveries about the nature of reality and human life that still hold true to this day. From their mountain retreats and on their solitary journeys, these philosophers of the Indian subcontinent were able to gain insight that rivals modern science, but without any of the technological tools it relies on to do so. This is not taught in our textbooks. There is no homage paid to this lineage in Western universities or professional science, but it will be clear to you that these sages were onto something far deeper than any of us could imagine. The truth of what really happened is finally being dug up and explored, causing many people to rethink our understanding of scientific progress and history. The implications of this are sure to have a big impact on the world, but this could be the most important discovery for you personally, and by the end of this video you will see exactly why. The picture painted in the history classroom today is one of a clean progression from mystical ancients hopelessly lost in their desperate attempts to explain the world to rational modern societies aided by the knowledge and discoveries of modern science. According to this perspective, we have left the chaos of nature and entered a place of civilized, logical living, where we know far more about the world and thus no longer require the help of some mystical sage to get us through life. When the modern era, as the West calls it, emerged through the Enlightenment and the mechanistic Newtonian physics, our relationship to the world began to change. Enlightenment thinkers pushed the idea of subject and object, or this separation of man and world, which has come at a high cost. Combined with Newton's cosmological picture as a cold, dead, and mechanical reality, man has come to see himself as living in a very hostile world. As philosopher Alan Watts articulated, this separation then leads to a hostile attitude towards nature, to a view of it as something that must be subjugated and exploited. The earth is on a path to destruction, genocides are being committed, and the threat of nuclear Armageddon has risen out of the use of modern science, and all are from the position of this world as hostile. So, we have logic and science, but what happened to wisdom and compassion? Did we lose the natural world and our place in it in the pursuit of technological progress? Only recently has modern science even begun to match the discoveries made by the Rishis with the exploration of quantum mechanics and the arrival of Einstein's theory of relativity. But how did they do it? Without advanced mathematics, measuring and recording devices, or any technological aid employed by modern science, how did they discover fundamental truths about the nature of reality and our connection to it? Before we get into that, here is a discovery they made that rivals those of modern science. Einstein and many of the scientists who came after him proved that time and space are relative. This was a blow to the mechanistic picture, and seems alien to us Westerners who try to control and systematize everything. The fact that time and space are not eternal, but were in fact suppositions and functions of the mind was well known to the Rishis. They declared that human life is completely conditioned by the three Upadis, conditions for our understanding of reality, which are space, time, and causation. Everything we observe in the world exists in space for a finite period of time and has a cause, however entangled it might be. Without these three upadis, the mind cannot function. Immanuel Kant would come to a similar conclusion with his categories of the mind, which would essentially throw the world of Western philosophy into chaos. Einstein said that one cannot talk about space without bringing in time, all measurements involving time are devoid of absolute significance. The famous example involving a pair of twins is what is used to illustrate this. One of the twins goes on a spacecraft that travels at 90% of the speed of light. When he returns to Earth at 46 years old, he finds that his twin is already 80 years old. In a text linked to these ancient sages called the Bhagavad Purana, it is shown that Rishis already understood that time is relative and affected by a changing environment. The king in this story goes with his daughter, Ravathi, to the world of Brahma and stays there for only the duration of a few minutes. But when he returns, he finds the whole world has changed and none of the people he knew existed anymore. There are many such instances that show us that the ancients were well aware of the fact that space and time and velocity are inseparably bound together. What this means for us is that within our minds there lies a key to realizations that could change everything. The very thing that advertisements and authorities rely on to control a population is convincing them that they have something we don't, a key to life or access to some power that we need them to get to. But what the Rishis have shown us is that we are that very point of access, down to the very fabric of what we 
call reality, it is our actions and thinking that crafts it into anything. Which means that we really do shape everything about our own experience. And the only thing missing is the confidence and the knowledge of how to do what they did. The Rishis, as you may have guessed, employed meditation as a means to gain deeper understanding. By secluding themselves and having extreme discipline, the type of discipline to meditate most of any given day, they could begin to oscillate with the substrate underneath our limited day-to-day -day experience. But it wasn't just meditation. They used something that represents the cosmic unity, sounds. To be more specific, this is where mantras were first created and used to help them find this place beyond where they could make discoveries. Every sound has a certain effect on the consciousness. For example, when we hear some pleasant music, it calms us. Other types of music make us get up and dance without even thinking. In the same way, the ancient sages, going deep in meditation, figured out the effects of different vibrations on our consciousness. Assimilating these different sounds, perceived in deep meditation, the rishis came up with these mantras, which have a specific impact on consciousness. Through this, one can begin to see that reality is really composed of waves and patterns. In fact, in our modern science today, the theory of quantum mechanics claims that particles act as waves of probability. In the words of scientist Niels Bohr, everything we call real is made up of things that cannot be regarded as real. So, if we want to discover more than we ever imagined, we can do so without paying or following anyone else, just using us to enrich themselves. While it might not be realistic for many of us to be as disciplined as the Rishis, the fact that we can gain significant insight by spending long periods in meditation and communion with ourselves is very empowering. On this line of thought, we can manifest our own future experience by learning what is at play behind the superficial comings and goings of our social lives. All pursuits of deeper knowledge are valuable, whether modern or ancient and we owe it to those around us to understand ourselves more deeply so that our thoughtless actions do not impact them. And we owe it to ourselves to do whatever we can to find happiness and peace in this life. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.